Greetings, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread and Scripture Song broadcast for this 23rd day of March. It is Saturday, and we are in the weekend, and today's topic for the Baptist Bread is titled, Commitment Equals Follow-Through. So, make sure we follow through when um, it says this here, Commitment Equals Follow-Through, and so we'll get into that topic here in a few minutes, and before I get started... And all that, I'd like to greet you as always, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And he too can be your Lord and Savior today, if he's not already. And uh, I was getting caught up on some of the messages I missed from a couple weeks ago when we went to uh, down to Hialeah. And getting caught up on Brother James's messages from the morning uh, lesson and uh, talking about... Uh, uh, without controversy, great is the uh, mystery of God, godliness and all that. And uh, that was a good lesson so far. I'm still listening to it. Um, had to stop for a few minutes and and uh, hopefully pick back up on that. And uh, if you missed that message, I encourage you to go back and listen to it. It's really good. So and that was from um, 1 Timothy chapter 1, the very last verse. So, amen. And uh, I'll tell you more about that uh, there and um, how to... Listen to all those sermons from Brother James, from the pastoral epistles that he's going through so far. So, all right, but uh, make sure you trust Jesus as your Savior and realize you're a sinner and undone and dead in trespasses and sin and on your way to devil's hell without Christ and to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Amen. All right, so we're going to start with uh, the scripture song of today from 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And... So let's go ahead and look at Second Corinthians chapter 5 in its entirety. And then we'll get into the scripture song verse here. So let's see. Second Corinthians chapter 5. And let's see here. There's 25 verses here. So let's look at this here in its entirety. It says here in verse 1, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Amen. And if you're saved, born again, you know that. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is in, which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that which we be um, not for that which uh, we, uh, let me reread that, okay, so, for we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the self same thing as God, who also hath given us, or unto us, the earnest of the Spirit, Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith and uh, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing, rather, to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body, according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad, uh, yeah, or bad, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and trust also, or excuse me, and I trust also, are um, made manifest in your consciences, for we command Commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them, which glory in appearance and not in heart. He says, this is uh, Paul speaking here, For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be sober, it is for your cause, for the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them, and rose again. Wherefore, uh, 
henceforth, uh, henceforth know uh, we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Hallelujah. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in God's stead, be ye reconciled to God, for he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Right? So that is the entirety of chapter 5. So you get the context there. And now let's go ahead and do the scripture song for today from verse 17 of Second Corinthians 5. We'll press play and sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. So amen. Here we go. Second Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Therefore, if any man, any man, any man, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. For if any man, any man, any man, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he a new creature, old things are passed away, behold, all things are become new, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Praise the Lord for that. So hopefully you're in Christ. So let's put that back to yesterday's, and we'll do those scripture songs again at the end of the broadcast, but now it's time to get into today's topic for the 23rd of March, Saturday, 2024, titled Commitment Equals Follow-Through. And we have here 1 John 3.18 says, My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. 1 John 3.18. And again, let's go ahead and look at 1 John chapter 3 to get uh, the entirety of this chapter here. So 1 John chapter 3 and let's see here so first john chapter 3 and what is it uh first john 3 18 so let's see how many so there's 24 verses in this chapter here so let's go ahead and read this chapter together really quick so chapter 3 and verse 1 says behold what manner of love the father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And this is talking to believers in Christ. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth against the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. 
whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. In this little, or excuse me, in this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness, is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because he, because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. We know that we have passed from death unto life, because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth, and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart, and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, that, then have we confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments, and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, as he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And here, hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. Amen. So that's the entirety of chapter uh, 3 of uh, 1 John. And so now let's go ahead and get into the topic for today, titled again, Commitment Equals Follow-Through. And the passage is 1 John 3.18. Again, it says, My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Amen. So uh, today's author is Brother Tim Green from Revival in Our Times, Day Heights, Ohio. So let me read you what he wrote here. So Brother Green writes here and says here, Tucked within the confines of First John's 105 verses, one finds a bounty of blessings. This book is a book of love. John tells us what love is and what it isn't. Amen. He also reveals to the silent inner soul of the saved, who is the author, example, and epitome of love, God himself. These pages proclaim and, and uh, enunciate uh, the powerful truth of character, uh, or excuse me, of chapter 4 and verse 8, God is love. So again, these pages proclaim and uh, uh, enunciate the powerful truth of chapter 4 and verse 8, God is love. And then he says, my thoughts concerning this verse today are confined to four words in our text, word, tongue, deed, and truth. We are not just to love in word, that is what is written, nor tongue, what is spoken, but in deed, which constitutes reality, and truth, which is recognizable. Thus we have commitment exemplified by follow-through, so not just to be heroes, but uh, hearers, but doers also, and all that stuff, so... Is what he says there. Uh, he writes here, continuing on, It is never good to start something and not finish the task at hand, right? <laughs> so when you start something, make sure you finish it. If God leads you to an obstacle, he can get you through the difficulty or the multiple roadblocks on the way. I, He says, I like the way John, under the Spirit's direction, starts our verse, My little children... I have written often and said it a lot. Jesus never took little children to observe his disciples. However, he 
took his disciples to learn from children, and that's Matthew 8, 1, FF. Uh, John, I think, got the message, <laughs> right? A childlike attitude in approaching any virtue of faith seems to be the one God blesses when we have things all figured out. Calamity is often the conclusion of the matter, for lots of things were not considered at the start. <laughs> right? So, let's take heed of those things. And uh, um, having that commitment equals follow-through. So, making sure we're following through these things that we do. And amen. Alright, so, hope you understood that uh, well there. And good little topic from Brother Green. And now... Uh, Close that up and grab the Daily Strength Volume 2 book as we are concluding this week on um, Confession. And this is Day 49, Saturday, titled Confession as a Means of Worship. And we have Nehemiah, Nehemiah 9, 1 through 3. It says, Now in the twenty and fourth day of this month, the children of Israel were assembled with fasting and with sackcloths and earth upon them, and the seed of Israel separated themselves from all strangers, and stood and confessed their sins and the iniquities of their fathers. And they stood up in their place and read in the book of the law of the Lord their God one fourth part of the day, and another fourth part they confessed and worshipped the Lord their God. So that's the passage there from Nehemiah 9, 1 through 3. And now the introductory thoughts. It says here, any person who truly loves the Lord has a strong desire to worship him, yet we frequently fail to realize the various opportunities of worship. The Bible closely connects worship to the word of worth, much like the word praise is closely connected to the word appraisal. When we worship the Lord, we declare what we think about his worth to us. Perhaps you never considered that true confession of sins to a holy God declares God's worth to you. We see this in our passage when confession and worship are mentioned together. Nehemiah 9.3 When we confess our sins to the Lord, we are telling God that we desire his fellowship more than we desire the pleasures of sin. Hebrews 11.25 is the reference there. So that is introductory thoughts. And now for devotional thoughts for children. It says, by confessing your sins to God, you are telling him that you believe he is holy. He is the true and living God and the only one who can forgive sin. You are also admitting that only he knows all that you've done. Jeremiah 16.17 Confession is truly a very important part of worshiping God. And that is for children. And of course we can apply that to adults too. And now for everyone. It says, do you sufficiently love God enough to obey him in the matter of confession of sins? Would you rather hold on to your sin rather than to enjoy unhindered fellowship that God so freely offers? <laughs> yeah, let's hope, hope that we don't want to do that. Uh, what are the sins in your life that currently remain unconfessed? Are you willing to take that to the Lord right now and declare his worth by confessing those sins? Mm, we should. So let's uh, get to doing that right now. Amen. Okay, so that's uh, devotional thoughts. And now for prayer thoughts, it says, Worship the Lord by confessing your sins. And then ask the Lord to give you a deeper love for him. And then the song from the book, which is not in the hymn book. Couldn't find this one either. So this is titled, While Here I Live, I Live to Thee. So couldn't find that one. Another one that couldn't find in the book. So it's either under something different, different title. So we'll just sing one hymn today. And now let's read the quotes from the next volume. Volume 3, Week 7 is Subject Bereavement. And it says here, death takes place when the soul, Genesis 3, 35, 18, and the spirit, Genesis 25, 8, leave the body. When a loved one passes away, mourning serves as an important part of the healing process. Believers should never sorrow in the same fashion as the world, right? 
1 Thessalonians 4.13, yet mourning is, is acceptable and proper when grieving the death of someone, and believers understand that the separation of death is only temporary. For this reason, believers should find great hope when losing a loved one who knew the Lord. This loss serves as another reason to look forward to the joys awaiting us in heaven. Amen. So we shouldn't sorrow like others sorrow and know that those loved ones that uh, trust in the Lord are up there with him right now. And you know, we should be feeling sorry for ourselves, not for them, because uh, they're in glory and don't have to worry about sorrow and suffering or anything anymore. But we still have to continue in this state until we get our um, new glorified bodies and get to be with Jesus in heavenly places with the rest of our loved ones who trusted him as their savior. So if you have any loved ones that are um, lost and dead and trespassing in sin, make sure you continue to witness to them so they can have an opportunity to be saved. And uh, amen. All right. So that is the uh, end of the quotes from the next volume. And tomorrow we're going to be starting a new week. And this is titled Conversation. And we'll go over all the introductory stuff on conversation, its variations, first usage, last usage, how it's defined, interesting fact about it, Bible study tip. And then uh, we'll go through the week. And then day 50 tomorrow is church day. So no um, topics. So we do more fight on stories um, from the more fight on book. And this um, for the church day, day 50, Psalm 50 verse 23 is the passage. So that'll be tomorrow for the uh, introductory stuff of uh, for week eight on conversation. So, and then I'll give you the more fight on stories um, here in a little bit. But now let's go ahead and sing this one hymn here. And so <clears throat> this is going to be hymn 689. So let me uh, do this here. All right, so this is hymn 689, another one of these, the Service of the Saint Hymns, a spiritual song titled A Flag to Follow, written by John W. Peterson, who lived from 1921 to 2006. So three stanzas here, and no story, but there is a copyright, so um, let's go ahead and try to sing along here with this. So here we go. I saw the flag to follow, a cause for which to stand. I saw the valiant leader who could my love command. I saw the stirring challenge, some noble work to try. To give my life fulfillment, my dreams to satisfy. I found them all in Jesus, the life, the truth, the way. Beneath his flag I'll take my stand and follow him today. I saw the ringing answer for all my doubts inside. A torch of truth uplifted my searching steps to guide. I saw the word of wisdom, a true authority. I sought to know life's purpose, to solve its mystery. I found them all in Jesus, the life, the truth, the way. Beneath his flag I'll take my stand and follow him today. I sought for satisfaction, for yearnings deep within. I sought for full deliverance from chains of guilt and sin. I sought for peace and pardon, for freedom from my fears. 
I saw the hope to cling to beyond these passing years. I found them all in Jesus, the life, the truth, the way. Beneath his flag I'll take my stand and follow him today. I'll follow him today. Amen. Good hymn there. Okay, so that is the hymn. No story here, but let me give you the references and then give you the copyright information there at the bottom. So stanza one, we have Psalm 20, verse 5, Ezekiel twenty-two thirty, and Ecclesiastes 9, 10, and Psalm 91, 16. Stanza two, we have 2 Timothy 1, 7, Psalm 119, 105, James 1, 5, and Ephesians 1, 9. And then stanza three is Psalm 91, 16, Isaiah 38, 17, 2 Timothy 1, 7, and Titus 2, 13. And then one reference for the refrain, we have Psalm 20, verse 5. So that is the hymn and the references. And it says here, copyright 1959, John W. Peterson Music Company, all rights reserved, used by permission. So that is the end of the hymn for today and put that aside there and grab the scripture song book and we'll do the scripture songs one more time and then we'll wrap it up for today so here we go yesterday's scripture song from the 22nd this is John jesus 13, speaking 13 you call me master and That's Lord, right and you say well for so i am Call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so I am. Master and Lord, call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so I am. Master and Lord. Today's one more time. Second Corinthians five seventeen. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Praise old the Lord. things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All right, here we go. Sing it out. Therefore, if any man, any man, any man, therefore, if any man be in Christ. He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Therefore, if any man, any man, any man, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. So, praise the Lord. All right, so if you're in Christ, you're a new creature and all that so praise the lord okay so that is it for today's broadcast but before i go let me give you tomorrow's scripture song for the 24th and we're starting a new week tomorrow and uh, so jeremiah 20 verse 13 is the scripture song verse and it says sing unto the lord praise ye the lord for he hath delivered the soul of the poor from the hand of evildoers so that's jeremiah 20 verse 13 and we'll Look at the context of that um, tomorrow also. So that's that. And then the Baptist bread topic for tomorrow is going to be titled Dangerous Leanings. And we have Ecclesiastes 11.3 as the passage. And tomorrow's author is D.C. 
That would be the initials for Dennis Corley, evangelist from Claysburg, PA. So he will be the author uh, tomorrow. So that's that for the Baptist bread. And then the daily strength, uh, we went over all that uh, introductory stuff for tomorrow. And again, we're starting a new week. Week 8 on conversation will be the uh, topic for the week. So that's um, for tomorrow. And then the more fight on stories um, here from the more fight on uh, book here. Uh, this is the second volume from Brother Gip. And this is more amazing stories about those who have persevered through hardship and danger. And we are on page 198. Where we'll be starting tomorrow. And let's see how many we'll do. I think we're doing three tomorrow, three stories tomorrow. So we have the first one is a lengthy one. The middle one is shorter. And then the last one is a little bit lengthy also. So uh, let's see here. The first story is titled Foot Race on the Ocean Floor. So that is the first story there on page 198 and 99. And then we have this quote here from Lewis Grass, a heroic Cuban refugee. And then I believe this is the story about him. And this is titled The Hunger for Freedom. So that's the second story. And then the third story will be titled Old Number One, uh, Old Number 1124's Last Run. So this will be on page 202 and 203 of the book. So those will be the three stories for tomorrow. Amen. All right. So that's that. Um, and we'll leave these other three stories for next time. So those are the three stories for tomorrow. And that, again, is from the More Fight On Stories book by Sam Gipp. And you can find all these uh, books uh, that he's written, including this one and Volume 1 and all the other books he has on Daystar Publishing dot com is the website there to get his books and then we have the hymn for tomorrow only one hymn and this is titled i'll wish i had given him more and this is hymn 690 we've made it all the way to hymn 690 a number uh, another one of these uh, the service of the saint hymns um, a spiritual song written by grace r adkins and unknown um, birth date and death date so that's in that, and then we also have a copy right here at the bottom of the page. No, no story um, for this one either. So, all right. So that's the one hymn for tomorrow, and I've been using the blue um, hymn book here, and this is one of the covers. I usually use the um, the brown one, um, but this is another color um, from the hymn books here. I have two different um, copies of this book, and there's three different colors there's this color the um, darker blue and then there's the um the brownish tan uh, one and then there's another bluish grayish um color to these uh, hymns and then there's also a leather bound edition and so that's that and then the daily strength volume two book this is uh volume two here and there's four volumes to this series of books by douglas d stoffer and andrew b ray and all these books can be found at MelodyPublications.com is the website there. And then the Scripture Song book and CDs, they should be available to order online at www.DailyScriptureSongs.com. That's Brother Dean and Sister Patty Runyon's website, Missionaries to Port Kaituma, Guyana. So pray for them and Brother Dean's health and, and Sister Patty and their walk with the Lord and um, their ministry there as they're here in Florida right now, and for the continued work um, of those that are um, taking uh, over the mission work in Guyana for the time being, and pray for that and all that stuff. So that's the Scripture Song book, and you can probably contact Brother Dean about the, the CDs. So, and I want to show you the back here. This is the cover of all the CDs. Sorry about the glare there, but that's kind of like what they look like. I know it's kind of... Got a glare there, but you can kind of get an idea of each of the month's uh, covers. So that's that. And then, um, so that's um, the Scripture Song book there, and then the Baptist Bread. Uh, this is the cover for this month and next month. And if you order now, you'll most likely get the one for May and June. And it comes in a box of 10, and it's twelve ninety five every other month. You'll get a box of these, and you can keep one for yourself and hand out the others to other uh, people or put them on your free table or wherever you... Uh, Put the, put the stuff at your church. So that's that. And that's uh, baptistbread.com 
or www.timgreenministries.org. And that second website has other books available to order if you see anything on that website that you like, if you go check that out. So that's that. And then the Bible, the King James Bible, the Word of God, this is the first book we should always be getting into and reading it and studying it and showing ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of Truth and seeking God's face and going to Him in prayer and asking Him to show you what He'd have for you to see as you're studying His Word and then have a good, solid relationship with the Lord. So make sure you do all that. And uh, amen. All right. And then want to mention the other broadcast I do is uh, where I've been reading Brother James's book on Genesis, part of the uh, the Christ Honoring Commentary series. And that book and all his other books can be found at store, 